Welcome to the new stories this week. First up we return to Mars with more confirmation that methane is being released sporadically into the Martian atmosphere. Previously NASA's Curiosity rover had already confirmed that methane levels vary seasonally, peaking in the northern summer. The rover has also detected two surges within the Gale crater. Now for the first time ESA's Mars Express has confirmed that one of these surges that the Curiosity rover detected inside of the Gale crater with its own sensors. And not only that, it was able to actually trace the source to a geologically complex region just outside of the Gale crater. Now the methane could be trapped beneath ice in this region and episodically being released along faults that crack through the permafrost due to partial melting of the ice or gas pressure buildup or other planetary stresses. Now this particular paper doesn't actually address the origin of methane but obviously there are two sides to this story. We, we know that living organisms produce methane as one of their byproducts but also there are geological processes which could equally release methane. So the question is, is this sporadic, so the fact that it's seasonally tied, does that link to a biological system or does it link to a geological system where heating or cooling could cause the same effect? Hopefully now they've been able to pin it down, it will allow them to study that region with a lot more detail and hopefully answer the question of whether there is simple microbes living underneath the surface releasing this methane over a period of time. The next story is about the end of the dinosaurs. So paleontologists have uncovered a remarkable fossil of a fish and it shows debris left when a tsunami wave surged up a river valley and trapped inside of this debris is a jumbled mess of fossils including freshwater sturgeon that apparently choked to death on glassy particles raining from the sky from the fireball that caused the impact. It is the first ever evidence of the interaction between life on the last day of the Cretaceous and the impact event, and the finding may also provide some of the strongest evidence that non-bird dinosaurs were still thriving on impact day. Next up is a story about space debris. Last week, India shot down one of its own satellites to demonstrate its prowess as an elite tier space power. The satellite in question was in low Earth orbit far below the International Space Station. As basic physics readily demonstrates, momentum is king, and in this case some of the debris created continued in an outward path that now orbits in an eccentric path intersecting the International Space Station. The NASA's chief remarked that this is a terrible, terrible thing to create an event that sends debris in an apogee that goes above the International Space Station. That kind of activity is not compatible with the future of human spaceflight. According to ESA, there are currently about 900,000 pieces of debris larger than a marble in orbit around Earth, and unless we start to clean up this mess, the number will only rise, making collisions more and more likely. Finally, a team at NASA have compared striking images taken of Mars' south polar cap some 10 years apart, one from 2009 and one from January this year. And these images show remarkable differences. In the earlier picture, far more frost can be seen on the surface compared to the more recent photograph. Now, a dust storm in the summer of 2018 may have deposited more dust on the polar region, causing it to heat up more, melting more of the carbon dioxide. I am, however, reminded that Earth too is undergoing a similar change in its own ice caps. A coincidence? Maybe. We already know that there is a connection between the Sun and the Earth. Solar forcing has a direct effect not only on our weather, but earthquakes too. Obviously, this is not accepted by mainstream yet. So is this confirmation that we live in an electric universe where changes on the Sun are mirrored in changes on its planets? And that brings us to the end of the news stories for this week. On Monday, an episode on the Big Bang will come out. Next Friday there will not be a news episode as I'm actually away on holiday. 
Um, but the following Monday, there will be uh, an episode on Plasma. So the two Mondays are already covered off. And hopefully I will return back to producing the news for the Friday after that. Uh, as always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.